Well, hot July 22nd to you and uh, your family. This is Bill Dixon and my co-host Bob Matthews with the North Carolina Vietnam Veterans Incorporated Lessons of Vietnam. Our show tonight is a continuation of our symposium we did on POWs. Uh, tonight is very special in that we have, uh, what was at the time, Major Hen Vo. He was, went from a machine gun to eight, a little over eight years in slave labor camps, as the communists called it, the uh, re-education camps. We're going to be hearing his story, and after that, we're going to be, uh, got, got some exciting announcements of some symposiums coming up and so forth, uh, and some uh, new books have come out and some things on the plan, but we're going to get started with the colonel, and then we'll come back and... Uh, Go out on announcements. If you have any questions or comments after you hear the colonel, stick with us and uh, call in or Skype in. Call in at 919-518-9773 or even better yet, Computers 2K Voice on Skype. That's Computers 2K as in Kilo Voice on Skype. Or log in to ncvi.org. And, and watching it live. And in order for you to have heard all that, you had to be already on. So we need for you to call in and make comments or, or suggestions or whatever. Give us whatever the colonel, uh, whatever you feel about the colonel. And go ahead and let's start the colonel. This is a, I'm not certain how to put this. This is, this is a different month, the month of April. In the Vietnamese community, they call it Black April, or the Day of Infamy, because April 30th, 1975, Saigon fell to the communists. They didn't just fall to the communist North Vietnam, they fell to Russia, China, and Cuba, because Russia, China, and Cuba were furnishing weapons and everything else that the United States to North Vietnam, but the United States had made a commitment to do the same for the South Vietnam and reneged. In the years following the fall of Saigon, the communists expected, exacted a cruel revenge on hundreds of thousands of its citizens in an extensive network of what they called re-education camps. The Vietnamese communists were a little more world educated than the Cambodians. We all heard about the killing fields of Cambodia. North Vietnam did the same thing with their re-education camps, just a little bit more slick, I guess. Executions, torture, and constant brutality were cloaked in a veil of secrecy. As one former re-education camp prisoner said, they did not want to re-educate us. They wanted vengeance. Another former prisoner stated the communists practiced genocide, and they decided who they wanted to kill, worked them very hard, fed them nothing, and let disease do the rest. There has been estimates of over 65,000 people being executed in the eight years after the fall of Saigon. There were over 500,000 people placed in estimated 300 camps throughout Vietnam. And statistics show that there was as many Vietnamese killed after the war as there were during the war because of the communists. The Vietnamese communists have called the reports of brutality in the camps distorted and fabricated. They stated, we pursue a benevolent and very humane policy towards the prisoners. They went on to say, there are, of course, regulations in the camp. If they are violated, it is necessary to ensure they are respected. But again, we are against torture. We punish torture. But on the other hand, prisoners must be punished when they try to escape or destroy discipline in the camp. Bill, Norman, y'all noticed how much they had heard uh, torture in your situation. To re-educate re them is to help them realize their crimes, 
to offer them an opportunity to listen to reason and to reform themselves in honest-minded people, thus contributing to the com common cause of national reconstruction. Hanoi said, we have nothing wrong, done nothing wrong by imprisoning the losing side of the war. It is Vietnam's right to punish those criminals as the European countries did with Hitler's people. The United States government and Congress basically threw the South Vietnamese soldier under the bus. We have with us tonight uh, a gentleman who uh, served as a major in the Rangers, uh, was also a uh, Providence, uh, Colonel, you were also a Providence chief or uh, an officer uh, there, and uh, we're very fortunate tonight that he's going to tell his story of communism. I know when I was in school, we had special courses on communism and so forth, and even today, Vietnam is communist, and if you go over there, everything looks so wonderful on the surface, but they don't have any freedom. They don't have the freedom to say much of anything. And North Carolina and Vietnam Veterans Incorporated, we've been back over three different times. Colonel Hein Vo and his group of men helped us raise money for the kids of Vietnam. We've been back twice and built playgrounds for children over in Vietnam who had nothing, nothing whatsoever. And he has helped us raise money to help those children because those children aren't communist. They're children. But the communist government did unmentionable things to the military, South Vietnamese military. If you go over there, there's funeral uh, uh, cemeteries everywhere, but there is no cemeteries for the South Vietnamese soldier. They're all gone. There is no veterans pension for the South Vietnamese soldier. They're basically whatever they can get for themselves. Now. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Colonel Hein Vo. We're very fortunate to have him tonight, and he wants to tell us his story. And Colonel, where you were, uh, where were you born in Vietnam? I was born in the Vietnam, in the South Vietnam. Uh, uh, in the city of province. Okay. Uh, and how did you become a so how did you get to be a soldier? Oh. Just I volunteer, go to the soldier, the, the, the school, officer school. I've been about one year so because of the communist in North Vietnam, attack in the South Vietnam. Journal 1954, right? This uh, North Vietnam take everything body and the floor and the army go back in the North Vietnam. And the South Vietnam stay in here. In 1956, the communists go back in the South Vietnam and kill a lot of people in the North Vietnam. I am the teacher for the, uh, the go to the lawyer school, right? I want to uh, go to the officer in the South Vietnam. Okay. Start from there, Colonel, and tell your story. Uh, and uh, Vic is there to uh, help you with the uh, Interpretation. So you just take it and, and tell your story. Trước khi tôi trình bày tất cả những sự thật vì tôi là nhân chứng của cuộc chiến Việt Nam. Before I tell my story, I'm the witness of the communists of Vietnam. I want to say thank you, America. And I'm very honored to be here today. Uh, tôi xin thay mặt tất cả những người Việt tị nạn, xin cảm ơn tất cả quý vị và cảm ơn nước Mỹ. Yeah, I'm representing Vietnamese. Thank you, America, for freedom. Quý vị nhìn tôi đây là quân phục và người lính Việt Nam cộng hòa và sau Việt Nam. You look at me. I am the South Vietnamese. Army with this uniform. Và cây cờ vàng ba sọc đỏ phía sau tôi là tượng trưng cho cây cờ tự do. The flag behind me is the flag represent freedom for the South Vietnam. 
màu vàng tượng trưng cho màu da vàng của chúng tôi và ba sọc đỏ tượng trưng cho ba dòng máu của ba miền Nam Trung Bắc. The, the yellow color represent our skin color and the red stripes represent our three parts of Vietnam, the north, the middle and the south. Cái cờ này nó khác với cây cờ của Cộng sản. This flag is different from the communist flag. Cây cờ Cộng sản là quý vị thấy màu đỏ và sọc vàng chứng tỏ rằng cây cờ là cây cờ khác máu. The communist flag is red and is, is, is saying that we have different blood. Và sau đây tôi xin phép quý vị cho tôi ngồi xuống tôi tiếp tục trình bày tất cả những cái gì mà tôi chứng kiến chiến tranh Việt Nam. Năm 1961 Nineteen, uh, I'm going to tell you the stories of the war in Vietnam starting 1961. Năm 1961, tôi tình nguyện đi sĩ quan và đến năm 1945, tháng 4 năm 1945. In 1961, I volunteer to join the military officer. Tôi ở tất cả có 15 năm lính. I have 15 years of military experience. Năm 30 tháng 4 năm 1975, tôi ở lại không đi. April 30, 1975, I decide to stay back in Vietnam. Và tôi ở lại chiến đấu và không có người cộng sản nào vô để mà bàn giao với chúng tôi hết. Yeah. Instead of running away, I stay back and no one discuss with me of what to do next. Và đến 1 tháng 5 thì Cộng sản mới ra lệnh, ông Dương Nhân Minh ra lệnh như chúng tôi là buông súng đầu hàng. Yeah. The following month, May, the, the, communist, yeah, the communist leader requests us to surrender, drop our, our guns and surrender. That was a month after the fall of Saigon, April 30th, 1975. Và quý vị biết rằng trong lúc đó chúng tôi đang chiến đấu mà chúng tôi phải buông súng yeah. để đầu hàng. During that time, we still fighting, but we have to drop all our guns and surrender. Không có cái gì nhục nhã cho một người lính phải buông súng để mà đầu hàng. He said there is nothing humi humiliation than surrender. Và tôi nói ở đây là tôi nói để cho quý vị biết là đây là sự thật chứ tôi không có tuyên truyền. Yeah. Xin quý vị hiểu cho. Yeah. What I'm saying is this is this is a true of the war. Quý vị có biết sau khi Dương Nhân Minh ra lệnh đầu hàng, bốn vị tướng của chúng tôi tự tử. After the communist colonel told us to surrender four of our general suicidal. Và kể cả cấp tá, cấp quý cũng tự tử. Yeah. Including the general and colonel they follow suicidal steps. Và một cái điều mà làm cho chúng tôi cảm động nhất là những người lính nhảy dù. The most emotional is the the military, the air force. Và những người lính thủy lung lục chiến. And and those um yeah, the marine corps. Những người lính đó ngồi xung quanh với nhau như thế này. They all sit together. In circle, Mở chốt lũ đạn ra. Open the grenade. Để xuống đó và cùng nhau ôm nhau yeah. để mà chết. Yeah. All those people surround as a circle and open the, the grenade and suicide. Sau một tháng, cộng sản chiếm được Sài Gòn. A month later, the communists capture Saigon. Tất cả chúng tôi phải đi trình diện để gọi là danh từ gọi là để học tập chứ sự thật yeah. là đi ở tù. Yeah. After after they capture Saigon, they capture all the South Vietnamese former military to go to um, re education camp. It's like learning the new government system, but we don't they don't know what's behind it. Tất cả những gia đình của lính cũng như là của dân chúng về vấn đề hành chính cảnh sát. Yeah. All the former militaries, um, Americans, um, employees, 
religious leaders, they all get sent to reconcentration camps. Đưa chúng tôi vô trong trại tù nói, ở Thủ Đức. Yeah. Yeah, they sent to a Tudic uh, reconcentration camp is about a, a little bit away from Saigon city. Thanh lọc ra, lựa ra những người nào như là như chúng tôi, quận trưởng, tỉnh trưởng, tiểu đoàn trưởng, trung đoàn trưởng, sư đoàn trưởng, an ninh quân đội, những thành phần nó gọi là ác ôn. Yeah, yeah, uh, they, they capture, they, they gather all the former military and they separate them by ranks, generals, Colonels, they go by the ranks, and that's when they they tell you how how much time do you have to serve. Và nó đưa chúng tôi xuống dưới tàu. Yeah, they brought these 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 militaries to the boat. Và chở chúng tôi từ Sài Gòn cảng Sài Gòn đưa ra Hải Phòng. They brought these people to the boat, and they um, take them from Saigon all the way to Hanoi. Từ Hà Nội nó đưa chúng tôi lên đi một chiếc xe lửa mà cái xe lửa nó gọi là xe lửa chở than bít bùng hết không có cửa. Yeah. And then from Hanoi um, they send these men um, to the train is a coal that carry uh, coal. There's no windows, you don't see the light. But the distance from um, Saigon to Hanoi it takes about like three days. Và khi đến đó thì nó đem cái xe Motorola của nó tức là cái xe bít bùng xe hơi sẽ bít bùng. Yeah, they 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 text these men in the the car with like I say there's no window, there's no lights. Và chở chúng tôi lên miền Bắc Cao Bằng Lạng Sơn. Yeah. They text these men all the way to the mountain up north in the north. Và lúc đó thả chúng tôi xuống. Then they drop these men off. Và bắt chúng tôi đi lên rừng đốn cây yeah. để về cất trại để yeah. ở. Yeah, they take these men for in the remote village and uh, drop them off and told them to go far in the mountain to chop up the, the bamboos to bring back to the camp to build the camp for these military men. Và bắt chúng tôi làm trại mỗi một người chỉ khoảng chừng 2 feet. Yeah. The space, uh, like two feet per person, the confinement. Và mỗi buổi sáng chúng tôi phải đi ra ngoài đồng để lên rừng đốn cây và làm ruộng yeah. đem về. Yeah, every morning these men had to go far into the forest to cut bamboo, hard working labor, like grueling labor, to carry down to the village and do all kind of work for them. Và mỗi buổi sáng nó cho chúng tôi ăn khoảng hai khúc khoai mì bị lớn. Yeah. So in the morning, they get, uh, the communists give these men like a small potatoes. Like in Vietnamese, we, man, we, we eat yam. Yeah. Có bữa thì cho chúng tôi ăn được một chén bắp bị nhiều. Yeah. Sometimes they give these men a, a small cup of coin. Thức ăn không có gì hết chỉ có nước muối. Yeah. So there there's lack of food, the only thing they have is salt. Đau không có thuốc uống. Yeah, when you sick there's no medicine. They hoping that these men would die off slowly without them killing these men and have a bad reputation. They hoping these men die slowly with lack of medicine. Chúng nó nói rằng thay vì giết chúng tôi bằng một viên đạn, nó uống đạn nó muốn giết chúng tôi bằng cách là yeah. bỏ đói chúng tôi và yeah. làm làm cực khổ như vậy. Well, they say that instead of wasting a bullet on these men and they have a bad reputation, they they let these men die of hunger and sickness without medicine. Và cứ 6 tháng thì nó bắt chúng tôi đi một chỗ khác. So they rotate to different camps every six months. Đến chỗ khác chúng tôi cũng làm y như vậy. Yeah. When they got moved to transfer to different camp, they, these men had to do the same thing. They had to go find ba bamboo, cut down trees, and brought it back uh, to the, the camp place and build their own shell. Đến 
Rất là nhiều lần chúng tôi đã có nhiều người chịu không nổi bệnh và chết tại trại cải tổ. Yeah. Many of them can take the, uh, the, uh, the heart condition and medicine. A lot of them die in the re education camp. Nhiều người trốn trại bị bắt lại. A lot of them try to escape and they got kept captured. Và nó đem ra, nó sư tử. Yeah, and they, they brought out to public and they kill them for runaway. Nhiều người chống đối với nó, nó xiền chân. Yeah. When you fight back, they tie you, your legs with a barbed wire. And hai tay cùng lại. Yeah, and two hand, hands, just like the German. The same thing. Just yeah, like. general. Và khi... Một tuần lễ nó cho chúng tôi đi tắm chỉ có hai lần mà thôi. You are allowed to take a bath twice a week. Những cái người mà bị cụm chân này khi mà thả ra là không đi được nữa. Yeah. The people that ran away and got captured and they tied them with barbed wire when they get them loose they couldn't walk. Hai cái tay, hai cái chân này kiền bằng sắt. Yeah. Thành ra nó mòn, nó ăn khuyết vô trong cả hai cái chân. Yeah. Yeah, they tie hands and, and feet with barbed wire, so in the long run, so there's so it's just bones. Tôi còn nhiều chuyện nhưng mà tôi tôi muốn nói để trình bày cho quý vị biết là đối với người cộng sản họ ác độc, <coughs> họ ác lắm. There are many horrible stories at re-education camp, but I just want to tell you the communist government is evil. Xin quý vị đừng bao giờ tin Cộng sản hoặc đừng bao giờ nghe lời Cộng sản. Yeah, please don't ever believe anything they say. Người Cộng sản nói với quý vị là thương quý vị phía trước, nhưng mà đâm quý vị phía sau lưng. Yeah. He's saying the communists, they, they say make you happy, but in the back they stab you. <coughs> Cái chế độ Cộng sản là luôn luôn chủ trương là nắm bao tử của quý vị. The communist government, government, the purpose is to hold your stomach. Để cho quý vị đói. Nó mới sai khiến quý vị được. So you can be so hungry, so can, they can tell you what to do, so you can listen to them. Để không muốn cho quý vị học cao, để cho quý vị ngu, nó mới yeah. sai khiến quý vị được. Yeah. The communist government, they don't want you to have educated, so they can tell you what to do. Sau khi tôi ở tù, tất cả là 8 năm ở trong tù. I was at the re-education camp for eight years with the torture that I had to endure. Má tôi phải lấy vàng để mà lo lấy tôi ra. My mom, she had to sell whatever she had. Anything that she owned, so try to get him home. Khi tôi ra tù, chỉ có ba tháng sau, When I got out of re-education camp three months later, tôi tổ chức một chiếc tàu đi gồm có 127 người. So I organized the boat uh, with um, we gather about 127 people. Và vượt biển đi qua Singapore. Okay, so you heard of boat people. So when I got out, I organized the boat with gather 127 people and we escaped. Vietnam and I got to Singapore. Đó là may mắn cho tôi. I'm very fortunate that I got out. Quý vị có biết khoảng hơn 500.000 người Việt Nam chết ở dưới đáy biển. Yeah, there are 500 misfortunate Vietnamese trying to escape out of the country die in the middle of the ocean. Khi chúng tôi qua tới bên này thì chúng tôi phải nói rằng chúng tôi xin thành thật cảm ơn tất cả những người Mỹ và tôi cần cảm ơn chính phủ Hoa Kỳ nhất là tổng thống Reagan. Yeah. So we finally, finally landed in America 
We thank you, America, for the freedom, for the liberty, for my life. And thank you, uh, President Reagan, for the opportunity that brought us here. Và khi tôi qua tới đây là năm 1983. I came to America in 1983. Và tôi làm việc tiếp tục làm việc đến năm 2006. I continue working until 2006. Và tôi retire. And now I'm retired. Và tôi tình nguyện gia nhập vào một lực lượng United Army Veteran Support Command. Và chúng tôi hiện bây giờ chúng tôi vẫn tiếp tục làm việc chung với ông Bill Nixon. Yeah. Right now, I'm very active with Bill, with the North Carolina Vietnam Vet. Và tôi xin kể quý vị là cái người cộng sản họ không có học. I want to let you know that the, com the communist governments they are uneducated. Một trung tá của cộng sản. Yeah. Đang ngồi học tập thế này, ông trung tá, một người trung tá của Cộng sản lên nói với chúng tôi rằng Máy bay của Cộng sản bay lên trên mây, núp ở trên mây Chờ máy bay của Mỹ bay ngang, bắn rớt yeah, While he was in re-education camp, these uh, uneducated colonel saying that um, We have special airplane that we hide up in the clouds, so when American airplanes pass by, we're going to shut them down. Và những cái người ở ngoài ngoài Bắc mà khi mà vô tích thu ở Sài Gòn, những người đó là những cái người không có trình độ. Yeah. After the fall of Saigon, a lot of um, North Vietnamese, mainly commerce, they came to the South Vietnam mainly all of them uneducated, most of them uneducated. Y tá ở ngoài đó vô trong này xưng là bác sĩ. Yeah. The nurse from the north came to the south, they called themselves a doctor. <laughs> they can call whatever they want because we have not, we can't say anything back. Quý vị thấy hiện bây giờ Thủ tướng của nước Cộng sản Việt Nam bây giờ chỉ học tới lớp 3 thôi. Yeah. Like, they call themselves like the major or corner of the um, Vietnamese government now is communist. They only like third or fourth grade education. Thành ra người cộng sản là muốn những người dân không muốn cho học cao là vì lý do là việc học cao sẽ hiểu biết nhiều cũng như chúng tôi hiểu biết nhiều thành ra nó không thể nào nó cai trị chúng tôi nó không thể nào nó 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 có thể nó nó nhồi sọ chúng tôi được. So that so that's why when they um they rule the South Vietnam so they don't want any of us to have any education because we might retaliate them. Khi chúng tôi ở tù quý vị có biết rằng một con cốc một con nhái một con ếch nó chạy ngang chúng tôi cũng phải bắt bỏ vô trong lửa để đốt để mà ăn. Yo, while I was um, at a re-education camp, anything that crawling on the ground, a bug, a frog, that I try to capture so I can cook and have a meal. Không bao giờ nó cho chúng tôi ăn no. They never feed us full. Có một hôm đó, cái ngày lễ độc lập của tụi nó, nó làm thịt heo. Um, there's there's one occasion that they celebrate their independent they um they they have like roast pork or barbecue cho pork. chúng tôi cho chúng tôi ăn yeah they fed these they fed us trong cái buổi trong lúc mà đang chia thức ăn thì có một người ở tù như tôi yeah while they passing out the food and there there was one um former military like me Nó mới la lên rằng con ruồi, con ruồi bu ra cái thịt đó đi mất. He was, he was yelling that um, there's a fly planted on the roast pork and it disappeared. <cười> 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 
Kính thưa quý vị Chúng tôi còn rất nhiều Để mà nói sự thật cho quý vị nghe Sự thật quý vị đừng bao giờ tin Cộng sản Và quý vị đừng bao giờ nghe Cộng sản Kể cả China, kể cả Việt Nam, kể cả Cuba yeah. Kể cả North Korea I'm telling you once again, do not ever believe the communist government say, including the Chinese government or North Korea. Vì chúng tôi đã sống chung với Cộng sản và chúng tôi hiểu những người Cộng sản. The reason I know so because I lived it. I lived with the Vietnamese communist government. Sở dĩ ngày hôm nay tôi muốn nói với quý vị là tôi xin cảm ơn quý vị và tôi cảm ơn nước Mỹ. Yeah, today again I say thank you America. Thank you for the freedom that I that I have today. Chúng tôi là những thuộc cấp là những quân nhân cũng như quý vị bên này cũng vậy, chỉ thi hành lệnh của thượng cấp mà thôi. Yeah. I'm here to follow direction from the people above me just like these two men here. Yeah. <cười> Chúng tôi không có lỗi. Yeah. We have no fault in this. Kính thưa quý vị, tôi muốn nói là một ông tướng bốn sao, ông Westmoreland. Yeah, um, there's a general Westmore that he said it cold and he wants to read it. General four star Westmoreland, the army force, he said. We did not lose in the Vietnam, but we did not hold true to their commitment to the Republic of the Vietnam military force. On behalf of the United States Armed Force, I would like to apologize to the veterans of the South Vietnam Armed Force for abandoning you guys. Thank you. Colonel, while you're there, would you ask uh, the rest of your group that served in uh, re-education camps to come down front? All your guys that were served in re-education camp? Yeah, yeah. Tất cả anh em quân đội đứng lên. Join us, join us in front, please. You know, the word hero gets thrown around a whole lot and almost doesn't mean anything. But as far as I'm concerned, these men right over here are all heroes. They paid a price and still went on and made a very successful life for themselves and their family and for this country. Well, that was uh, the Colonel. We're going to come back in just a moment with some questions and answers, but uh, we're uh, changing uh, the tape and so forth. I got a couple of really exciting uh, things to come up. This was a uh, copy of the symposium we did with the North Carolina History Museum. Uh, the North Carolina History Museum and North Carolina Vietnam Veterans Incorporated have partnered, and we're getting ready to do some more uh, symposiums coming up. Uh, hopefully you'll find these exciting. You can come down and watch them live. There'll be from 7 o'clock to about 9, 9.30 on the dates. The next one was actually July 24th, which I believe, if I remember correctly, is a Friday. I think you're all Friday. Uh, and that's the women who served. Uh, we're uh, going to have a nurse who served in Vietnam. 
We're going to have a, a, a lady who has been on this show before, uh, who was an engineer in Vietnam and carried a weapon. We're going to have a Donut Dolly, uh, a Red Cross volunteer who came in. And we're going to have a lady who has also been on this show uh, who worked at the embassy there in Saigon. So uh, that's the women who went to Vietnam. Most people don't even think about the women who uh, served in Vietnam, uh, but there was a lot of them there. There are, uh, what is it, nine Bob on the wall? Eight. Eight on the Eight wall. On the wall. Uh, military. There's other women who died uh, as a result of, of their service in Vietnam, but there's only eight that were in the military. Uh, coming up uh, September 25th, uh, another exciting symposium is going to be the Black Experience in Vietnam. We're going to have uh, the uh, Black Americans who served uh, during Vietnam to come on and tell their story. Uh, how they fared in Vietnam, uh, uh, any racial problems they saw or didn't see in Vietnam. Uh, looking forward to that one. And then we're going to be November 10th. Yes. Uh, the day before Veterans Day. We're going to have another special symposium. And this one, again, is going to be the ladies. We're going to have uh, those who waited. To give you an example of who we're going to have, we're going to have a wife of a POW who waited for her husband to come home and was very active in the POW movement. We're going to have a lady who uh, was engaged, and just before uh, her fiancé went to Vietnam, they decided to wait to get married until he came home. He never came home. Uh, we're going to have some, uh, uh, possibly a wife of a Vietnam vet, uh, family members of a Vietnam vet, uh, what they went through coming back home. Uh, we're going to be possibly have a young lady who was a child whose father never came home from Vietnam. Uh, don't know exactly what happened to him. So that's kind of the uh, symposiums coming up so far this year, and then we'll be doing uh, etchings in stone again uh, at the museum coming up uh, a little later. With more January, uh, we'll probably have something also. Uh, coming up, but that's the symposiums we have uh, coming up already. Uh, lots of exciting things. We'll be showing those again on the show so that we can get them more exposure. And I'm going to turn it over to uh, my co host, Mr. Bob Matthews. Uh, he's got a couple things he wants to talk to you about, and then we're going to get started on the question and answer part. You know, Bill, I, I think what you just previewed is very interesting with the, the upcoming seminars, symposiums downtown because it picks apart the fabric of Vietnam. Not just a soldier, not just a demonstration. You're talking about people that never see the headlines. Sisters that waited at home for their brothers, my sister. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned the w women that waited. Janie Shooty waited eight years for Bill. Eight years of her life. Barbara Abernathy, you talked about, after she lost her fiance in Vietnam, was so kind, but so hurt by this, it changed her life. Remember her phone call to me at Edla High School? Yeah. I want to come in and sit in one of your classes. She came every day. And she was a grown woman working every day. She took her job off and came to class every day for 90 straight days. Well, you know, Bob, as you know, we had, we had our own colorful language in Vietnam. And by going into class and, and hearing the class discuss some of the terms and so forth that you had them, uh, she earned, learned, she understood some of the letters he had written her home. That's a great much point. better. She went back and reread them. Very, very interesting. The seminars will give the audience, Wake County audience, a chance to get downtown again, get up front and get involved and ask questions. We're going to have a lot of our veterans there too. A lot of the teachers are going to come down, bring some of their students. This is a family affair. This is going to be interesting because we are exploring every avenue of Vietnam. And some facts are coming out. Like you, you used to always say, everybody's entitled to their opinion, not to the facts. There's some facts coming out. And each week we come on here, every other week. I don't want to um, overdo this, but I do want to recommend tonight another book. Now this one I have read a couple times. And this book I want to recommend is more of the analytical book. From a teacher's viewpoint, it gets down to the nitty gritty. It covers the who, what, when, where, the five W's of Vietnam. And it's written by Richard Nixon. It's called No More Vietnams. And he touches on something 
that I haven't thought about in years. The Vietnam dilemma, we'll call it that, touched nine presidents, from Harry Truman to Jimmy Carter, even to Ronald Reagan. Some phase of it, of course, Lyndon Johnson, Richard Nixon, the bulk of it. Gerald Ford. Gerald Ford, of course. And when you read about Richard Nixon, something you never think about this man, at least I don't, he's portrayed in history as a villain. He's a funny man. When you read this book, here's one line he wrote. He said, the famous Winston Churchill said, history will treat me fine because I intend to write the history. <laughs> and Nixon said, so does he. And I highly recommend this for your library, No More Vietnams by Richard Nixon. I won't mention Watergate. I know I do every other week. I'll let it go. Now, another book we're going to recommend is by one of our guests, one of our heroes. Brigadier General Norman G. Gaddis has written a book called Dagger 4 is OK. Dagger 4 was his call sign when he went down. This is fairly new, Bill. Am I correct? Yes, it just came out. It's available on Amazon. Uh, it's like sitting down with a general and him just telling you his story. Oh, my. Uh, He's amazing. Uh, his story gets it's amazing. Uh, one of the true heroes of, uh, of our country who served a long, long time. Uh, he was a colonel when he was shot down, uh, kind of flying because he felt like he should be flying because he was leading his men. And rather than being the, the desk he was assigned to, he insisted on flying too. And he really technically wasn't shot down. The uh, SAM missile exploded beside his airplane, right. and it was uh, the debris was sucked up into the uh, engine and kind of uh, blew it up. And uh, but uh, it's quite a book. I get a chance to get the book at Amazon. Uh, just go on and get it. Uh, you can actually get. Uh, discount uh, version on there. I looked it up the other day, and they had uh, two different, they had some that had been used, uh -huh. which is surprising, as new as it's been out. I guess people read them and then uh, turn right back around and, yeah, and put them on sure. sale. So, um, do you anything else you want to say before we get back to question and answers? I do. I've two more items to mention, because uh, we keep striving to, to bring them more and more to the, the public, and one thing that's not really well known too much is there's an archive of things collected at the Vietnam Memorial in Landover, Maryland. And they catalog everything left there from hot apple pies to motorcycles. We have been invited to go to Landover, Maryland and tour the facility, get some information, and bring it back to our students and the populace of Wake County Schools, and of course, with our partnership with the museum. We're gonna explore this this summer and bring back this information. Got a lot of people listening tonight, and a lot of people that go to the wall leave something there, and they wonder what happens to it. Well, we're going to tell you what happens to it. Bring back the story. I know several things. One thing Mr. Bill Dixon, my, my co-host, left at the wall years ago is the centerpiece of the archive. Bill, you want to go to that a little bit? Well, it was actually, I, I put it together, but all NCVI did it. Uh, as we, I have talked about on this show from time to time, uh, one of the many jobs that I had in Vietnam was uh, uh, burning crap. Uh, and I've talked to a lot of other soldiers who uh, remember burning crap. And, you know, one thing about it, when you're burning crap, nobody gave you any crap. And that's pretty good in the military. <laughs> nobody ever shot at me or whatever. So we took a barrel and cut it in two and chromed it. And inside the barrel, we had a plaque made, a very nice plaque on a wooden background thing and everything. And on the plaque, it said, dedicated to all the burners on the wall and the date. Also in there was a, uh, a vase, or as you uh, northerners would say, a boss <laughs> with a red rose in it. And we left that there. Normally, whenever something is left at the wall, it's probably there about an hour before the... Uh, Park uh, guys pick it up and, and, and put it in archives, uh, except for flowers, but they, uh, they give those away. Um, but that stayed there most of the day, and watching uh, couples walk by, I, Vietnam I veterans couples, and watch the wife pull on her husband's sleeve and go point at that and say, what's that, and, he, and see his face when he explained to his wife just what that barrel was. And I think the, uh, the president of... Uh, uh, I th I was, was it Bush 1? Yes. I, I think uh, he was there that day, and he got a chance to see it, too. So 
it's in the archives, and we look forward to seeing it and doing a show on the things they left. And um, I called them today. We were talking, Bill, and you'll, you'll recall that we also left that day a black Sharpie in there. People would sign the barrel. And I promised Bill a few years ago I would find that thing. So I kept calling and calling. I knew the caretaker of the, um, of the archives, Mr. Drury Felton. Drury Felton was his name. He just retired. And I called him one day, and he said, of course I know where the bear was. I'm looking right at it. And I said, he said, it's the centerpiece of the archive. So we're going to see it. And my last announcement tonight is uh, we're on the brink of um, putting a blanket over the United States. Bill and I and several of our members at NCVI, we have taken on ourselves to go to every national teacher's convention and present the Vietnam curriculum to that section or that region of teachers. We have covered every section of the country except the southeast. Now, our last section is this November in New Orleans. We'll have covered the southeast. We've done Boston. We've done St. Louis. We've done Seattle. Yeah. And now we've, we've done Washington, D.C. and Cincinnati and Texas. So now we're going to do New Orleans, and we're going to have most of the school districts know of us, and we give them an indication how to use us online. And, of course, we give them the website of this show. We're handing them the curriculum, handmade. Thank you. All right, if we can get back to the question and answers, and we have enough time. I've, huh? Uh, we only have 10 minutes. All right, I got something that I would like to ask all of you out there to help me with. We've had on this show several times uh, get my, the name of, my, of a man by the name of Kerry Turner. Kerry Turner. Turner. Turner uh, had two nephews. One name was Lane Hargrove. He was killed in 1968 in Vietnam. His other nephew, actually his cousin, I believe. Cousin. I'm sorry, yes, not cousin. nephew. Joseph. I don't know where I'm going. Uh, mm -hmm. Joseph N. Hargrove. Joseph Hargrove was a one of three Marines were left on the island of Kong Tang in, in Cambodia after the Mayaguez Mayaguez uh, issue. And they've been trying to get Joseph home for some time. There's a lot going on. Uh, if you didn't see the show, I uh, uh, might point out you can go back to the archives with Kerry Turner and talk and where he talks about bringing Joseph home and what, what he's done. There's a book out uh, that... Uh, Kerry wrote, uh, bring Joseph, uh, bringing Joseph home. Bring Joseph home. But I want to read you a letter uh, that he recently wrote. Uh, he was recently in Cambodia for the 40th anniversary of the Maquez uh, incident and with some other veterans. And we think there's, uh, that Joseph has been, uh, uh, remains have been recovered. So I'm going to read this letter. It's a long letter. But what I want you to do is take heart I know a lot of veterans organizations take the Purple Heart, uh, not Purple Heart, the POW uh, emblem and put it on their ch on a chair uh, for their meetings. And that's great, symbolic. But this is a chance that we might be able to bring home an MIA. Uh, we know he's not POW. We know he was killed. Uh, but bring home and get that family closure. The mother has died now, but there's still a family out there. But uh, sure. We think Joseph has been found. We just don't know why he hasn't uh, been recovered. Uh, before I do this, I want to remind you that the Tomb and Unknown Soldier for the Vietnam War was when they, he was interred in the Tomb and Unknown Soldier. They knew who he was at the time. He was not unknown. Uh, why they uh, put down someone they knew uh, was was the family of uh, into Tomb and Unknown Soldier has not ever been brought out, really, uh, but his family needed the closure. Now, this is a letter. Uh, Ashton Carter, 1400 Defense Pentagon, Washington, uh, D.C., 21st of June, 2015. Mr. Carter, my name is Kerry Turner. I am cousin to Lance uh, Corporal Joseph Nelson Hargrove. Joseph was a member of the three man machine gun team that was left behind during the Battle of Mayaquez incident. Last month, May 15th, made 40 years since the battle was fought. Joseph was captured and executed the following morning by the Khmer Rouge forces. 
For almost nine years, I have been fighting to bring Joseph's remains home. During that time, I have discovered many things. The most troubling among these are my cousin's remains have been recovered or are currently in possession of JPAC. Yet JPAC denies having any such remains. I have proof that members of JPAC are involved in a cover up. There's a lot more to this story than just leaving three Marines behind. The cover up be began just minutes after the last helicopter, Knife 5 1, left the island of Kong Tang thus ending with the extraction of the Marines as well as ending the battle. There were individuals that knew the three Marines were still on the island. More specifically, the officer that gave the, those Marine, three Marines orders to lay down cover fire for Knife 51. With the understanding that another helicopter would come for them shortly afterwards, no one came. For 40 years, the powers that be have insisted those Marines were accidentally left behind. In an attempt to discredit those Marines, others have said they disobeyed orders and were not where they were supposed to be had, had, had they had abandoned their positions. The truth of this story is three Marines were exactly where they were ordered to be. They were doing their duty according to the orders they were given or as they understood those orders. I have witnesses that can prove what I have written. I am absolutely certain there are individuals who have fought all these years to keep this quiet and is the influence of those individuals that have instructed, uh, instructed leaders of JPAC to refuse to turn over Joseph's remains to our family. I have also witnesses that were on the islands when Joseph's remains were recovered, and they are willing to testify to that effect. Joseph is often referred to as the executed American. There was only one American executed on the island. The individual that executed Joseph has ID Joseph's picture multiple times as being the one he killed. I was with this individual last month on the island when we visited Joseph's grave. Mem members of JPAC dug that site in 2008. JPAC claims they found nothing in 2008, but their own documents state otherwise. I have copies of these documents. I met with the members of JPAC in March 2009. Among those was Johnny Webb. In that meeting, I caught Webb in multiple lies. Also, David Rosenau, who seems to be mighty concerned with what Joseph Widow would do with her husband's remains, should she receive them. I also have documentation to prove this. Mr. Carter, please don't trust Johnny Webb. He appears to be working under the table for the powers that be, and they have their own agenda. I prefer to believe the best in people when we first meet. I remain that way until they have proven otherwise. I sincerely believe you're a good man and are sincere about trying to clean up the mess that was made by other departments, especially past actions that caused a lack of transparency and extreme amount of distrust. Here's a good opportunity to show all the veterans how genuine you are in being transparent and trying to do what is right. Thousands of veterans are following my efforts to please bring Joseph home. On behalf of the Hargrove family, I am begging you, please send Joseph home. If you are willing to meet with me, I can prove everything I have written in detail with even more than I have mentioned in this letter. Everything I can reveal to you is easily accessible by you. You have the resources available to you to put an end to 40 years of suffering by my family. Not only did we lose Joseph, we also lost his brother Lane during the Vietnam War in 1968. In addition, please help me to redeem and clear the three Marines' good name by discrediting the accusation and reveal, revealing their act of sacrifice. There again, I had solid proof. Concerning this matter, I remain, sir, your servant to assist at any time, anywhere. Now, if you go back in the archives, uh, Carrie talks about uh, they dug up some remains from the site that the man who shot Joseph said he was at. That remains has a picture of a remains of a wound in the head, which the man says he applied when he shot Joseph in the head, and also a wound in the leg. Um, this story is still out there, and 
my request is to you, we're going to post this on the uh, website in a couple of days, uh, ncbi.org. I'd like for you to reach out to Ashton Carter, uh, your congressman, or anybody else you think of influence, and let's bring Joseph home. JPAC has had a lot of problems. They were bringing home empty caskets covered with American flags, claiming they were lost remains of soldiers they brought home, which was been proven to be a lie. Mm -hmm. They have decided to redo JPAC. They changed the name of the organization. They took the same people who were there before, changed their job titles, and left them still there. Nothing has gotten better. Nothing has been straightened out. It's kind of like the VA issue right now. There are more soldiers right now waiting for treatment at the VA hospitals than there were when they first came out. They were waiting anywhere from uh, 60 to 120 yeah. to 180 days. There's more veterans now waiting. It's gotten worse since the information came out. Everybody was, well, let's get the veterans taken care of. Uh -huh. Let's help Kerry Turner bring Joseph home. Reach out and touch your uh, congressman, whoever you can. Uh, you can go to... Uh, NCBI, North Carolina Vietnam Veterans Incorporated, on Facebook. Uh, the letters are already there. Uh, make you a copy of it. Uh, send it as an attachment to a letter to whoever you think needs to be informed. Uh, all the veterans organizations out there, let's quit giving lip service to the POW MIA issue, and let's bring Joseph Hargrove home. There was a man who was part of JPAC who says Joseph's remains are on a shelf in Hawaii. Let's find out why they're there. Even more important, let's bring them home. That's uh, what I'd like for you to do, and uh, maybe we can have a show with uh, Kerry uh, for too long with we, uh, and invite you all to the uh, service for um, uh, Joseph Hargrove. That'll be a day, wouldn't it? Speaking of that, this coming Saturday in uh, somewhere around Salisbury, again, if I don't, uh, Bear, I can't name the name of the uh, town that the uh, Joseph Edwin Morgan uh, will be, uh, have a service uh, about 10 o'clock. Uh, that information will also be on the uh, NCBI.net website uh, next day or two. Uh, I plan on going to the service. And if you've never been to one, uh, it's quite special. Uh, go and stand in line with the Patriot Guard or go into the service or whatever, but show your support for his family. He's been gone 40-some years, uh, but he's f coming home, which will put down tonight to 39 yes, it would. of those who are still there. Uh, looking forward to seeing you the next show, and we can do some question and answers. Uh, we're working on our next show. We could have a guest, or we may... Uh, just go into uh, some more what we hope is good quality information. Bob, I'm going to let you finish it up. We're running out of time, but uh, finish up uh, whatever you want to do and how you want to do it because I've been, been long-winded tonight. We have a special guest coming on. We hope we can get his calendar cleared. A man that works in Vietnam quite a bit named Mitchell Dovecchio is coming on to tell you about his pursuits with the wounded South Vietnamese soldiers. It goes hand-in-hand -hand with our plight and our, our mission is to teach a nation which we plan to do. Thank you for your attention tonight. Stay cool if you can. See you soon. Good night. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Amnon Nissan, Health In with Debbie Brook, Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Lessons of Vietnam with NCBBI members, The Tanya Love Show, Your Healthy Pet with Gisela DiCarlo. And if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it at www.nissancommunications.com. Sponsored by Atomus.com, makers of quality video recorders and converters for professionals. CarolinaApparel.com and DeltaForce.net.